Hey guys, Cody Schwabe here, and I've actually been getting a lot of uh, feedback and views on my Pollock video that I did about how to make a Jackson Pollock painting. So I figured I'd, I'd kind of do another one as like a follow up to kind of explain a little more about the process. And it's funny because there's a lot of criticism about it saying like, oh, this isn't art or it's anything, you know, it's easy to do, anyone could do this. And it's funny because Pollock himself uh, received that same criticism when he was live. And yet he's, you know, pretty much the most famous American painter, or at least one of them. Um, so uh, I'd actually just like to talk to you kind of about how you can make your own. And I'll, I'll talk about some of the things that you'll, you know, that I use and some of the things that Pollock himself used. And I think I'll probably do a separate video about the actual technique and kind of showing that off, or at least again, how I do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two paintings that I recently did um, that I didn't record myself doing, because again, sometimes I just don't get the chance to record them. And unfortunately, those are the usually the really good ones uh, when I don't record. But anyway, I'll show you those, kind of how I did them, and then I'll also show you some of the tools. And then if I get a chance, I'll do a separate video showing the actual uh, technique, all right? So without further ado, let's kind of jump in. So this is a painting I did called Mercury. Um, I recently did it. You'll notice it has like an orange reddish background with some yellow dots. Uh, the yellow is just to break it up. Um, it's kind of a reddish orange background and I actually did the background with paint brushes. Um, you know, kind of poured the paint on and then brushed it out to the edges. Um, but the important part is the lines, okay? So you can see uh, the lines here that almost kind of like look like electricity or some kind of energy um, that comes from the the paint being wet um, Pollock used very wet paint um, when he you know dripped it or flung it or threw it um, is very uh, thin paint and um, I'm gonna show you some of the tools and explain it um, that some of these tools wouldn't have worked if, if it wasn't really wet um, I wouldn't say that it was like half paint, half water, but it was very, it was watered down to the point where it did not take a lot of effort for it to spread. Um, so you can kind of see the breakup in the paint here. These lines that you see where it looks like, like I said, like static or, or energy or something, that's because when, the, when I threw the paint um, with the tools, you know, that's what that is. So this is actually the separation of the paint hitting the surface and breaking up. Um, and then you can see it, it's not as much here. Another thing is when I made this painting, um, it was actually, the background was still wet. So I applied the paint on top of the wet background. I did not allow the paint to fully dry in the background before I added it. So you can kind of see right here, like where it's swelled, um, that the paint beneath it was kind of absorbing the paint of this. You can see it with these really, uh, dark lines here. You can see how the kind of the red bleeds over. Um, so if you want an effect like that where it absorbs it, almost where it's like this painting almost kind of looks luminescent and that's part of the reason why because you have the stark white but also because the background absorbed some of that color. So if you want uh, that look where it, it's almost has, like it almost has an outline, that's what you'll do. Let me show you another one. All right, so this one right here is a piece that I call Fall Rhythm. And it's actually an homage to Pollock um, because he has Autumn Rhythm. And essentially it's the same name, but of course it's not, anyway, um, anyway. Okay, um, you'll notice that it's very, uh, very similar to the type of work that he did. Um, again, I'm a huge fan, but of course I'm learning my own things, but you know, the painting, is just was an experiment with a few things first off the this is not actually the canvas um the color right so you see the color the the background almost looks like a parchment um if you look on the side because i actually didn't paint the side um sorry if that's upside down all right so you can see that this is the actual color of the but that's because of the gesso um if you flip it over you can kind of see that that's it's hard to see because of the sun, but that's the actual color, right? But it's it's pretty similar. Um, the parchment that I painted it, and then the 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 back. So 
Pollock actually didn't really gesso a lot of his paintings, um, at least not the, the major ones like, you know, Autumn Rhythm or uh, Lavender Mist. A lot of them, he just put the paint on and he did not, you know, there was no gesso on the canvas. Um, if you don't know what gesso is, gesso is the thing that kind of, it's like a primer for the canvas that adheres the paint to it, okay? So this already had gesso on it. And so what I did to kind of achieve the same look as the, the cotton is I actually painted the canvas first. So this, all of this that you see is actually a parchment uh, acrylic, parchment colored acrylic that I put over the entire canvas first because it already had the gesso, so it looked white. Um, so I went ahead and painted it a parchment color to give it that, that un, like almost the canvas look, almost, not quite. Um, but what it does is it, it brings out the other colors. So then you have black and white. So uh, the technique with the uh, black and white is fairly simple. I mean, you can see kind of the, the dots. So you'll know if the paint is kind of runny if you have these really thin lines, but then these really thick dots. And you can kind of see, again, the, the separation of the paint here. That's what these little ridges are here, okay? Um, and Pollock did a lot of layering, so uh, and he used a lot of black and white. So that's why you'll see that I, for this piece, I literally only used black and white. Um, and there's a lot of dots, a lot of lines. Um, now essentially it's not like Pollock, because Pollock, you'll notice a lot of his concentration is here in the middle. And then kind of as it tapers to the edges, a lot of the paint will die off. This piece is more obviously kind of balanced as far as where it is. It looks like there's a lot more here, kind of in the center than there is on the right, but the painting goes all the way out almost equally. Um, again, it's my own take um, as an homage to the person that got me into painting at all. So if it weren't for him, I you know, wouldn't be showing you these, these paintings. I wouldn't be doing it at all. All right, so let's kind of come into my garage, which is like my studio. And I just want to talk about a few things. First off, this is the paint I use. Uh, it's Dunn Edwards. That is a brand here in Arizona. Um, they are throughout the Southwest. But essentially what, I, what I'm trying to say is this is house paint. Um, Pollock used house paint. He used gloss enamel. Now, he used he used uh, oil-based gloss enamel. They don't really sell that as much out here now. So I use acrylic or latex. And latex is... It's not as versatile as far as the kind of the things that it can do, but it's what I have and I make it work. Um, it is easier to use in the sense that you can just just add water to thin it out. Um, so it, that part is nice. So let's talk about the tools. Here, um, all right, so Pollock mostly used um, sticks or the back of paintbrushes, um, syringes or not syringes, um, well, yeah, these things, bulbs, if I forget what they're called, um, basters, whatever you want to call them, and the, and like, like wooden sticks. So actually, I mean, he mostly used these and the backs of brushes, sticks, um, stuff like that. So you can see that I've done it as well. Um, I like to use these because these will give you kind of the, the thin line and you can flick it very easily. So if you're looking for a very action oriented piece, um, this will give you that now remember earlier i was talking about his paint was very liquidy i've tried to use this thing and it took a little while to kind of understand how to get it to work now it may just be because this is kind of a cheap um, bulb but um if you have your paint too thick this bulb will not pick it up it'll just kind of like it'll get stuck in the paint and you'll try to suck it up and the paint won't go so obviously if you look at if you look at Pollock's paintings, you'll notice that, um, or if you read articles about him or anything, um, he used those. He would actually like use them until they got jammed and they would just break them. So some of his paintings actually had glass in them. Um, but anyway, these, um, so the paint obviously had to be very thin for him to be able to use these effectively, okay? Um, so just something to think about. I've used it. Uh, I didn't see a lot of success with it, but then again, um, I didn't thinned it down a whole lot. I did thin it down, but not maybe not enough to use it. So I will experiment with that in the future. I only recently started using that. Um, I use the brushes, like I said. 
this thing is uh, pretty nice. So this is just a rubber spatula that I got from a department store. Um, and what's nice about this is that you can dip it in the paint and because it's rubber, um, it's got a little flexibility to it, but also the paint has to kind of run down to the round part. So it actually will hold on a paint. If you dip it in the paint and, and pull it out and start using it, it'll actually hold the paint for quite a while because, because of the shape and the design. And I like it because it produces very thin lines. Um, these paint sticks is actually a big, um, a big tool that I see a lot of people who, who make Pollock style paintings and stuff or action paintings. I see a lot of people using these sticks. I actually like using them as well. So, you know, you can get these from like Home Depot for free, I believe. Um, I actually just got a bunch of them and I've been using them ever since. Um, but I mean, as far as that is, I don't think there was anything else. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that kind of gives you a better understanding of, you know, what Pollock did or kind of an idea of how to make your own. Um, I know it's not perfect and I apologize for that, but hopefully that gives you an idea. A lot of the, a lot of his paintings just kind of came from, you know, just experimenting. And a lot of things that I would tell you to make your own Pollock painting is just experimenting. Um, so that's pretty much the only advice I have for you. Hopefully you, you found value in this video. I'm sorry if I moved it around too much. I'm not a very good videographer. Um, but that's it. So please, you know, leave a comment, a like, and maybe subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Take care.